It's just going to be the three of us, looks like. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to week three in CE 155. Chef Eric and I welcome you to another fine, fine live session here uh, in uh, CE 155 facility layout and design. So, uh, week two. How'd it go, man? Week two, so far, so good. Things are yeah. looking tip top. We uh, still have a uh, few uh, late stragglers. Um, uh -huh. We're bop it in, um, but a lot of people have given um, you know some pretty quality answers to a matter of like those positives, and then also some of those negatives, right? But um, some uh, are kind of detouring away from those answers as well, right? I'm not looking for your business plan. I'm not looking for a direct immediate location that does help uh, narrow it down to give you a better feedback pertaining to your actual, uh, if this is something that you're really passionate about proceeding forward with, uh, you know, definitely look into those specific locations that you're looking to open your establishment because the more research you do now, the more legwork you do now, um, the less you're going to have to do in the long run, right? So, uh, it's better to start, you know, five years before, uh, you know, that kind of five-year goal situation, right, that you get all created in uh, CE 115 back in the day or even when you started. Uh, just remember to really dial it in uh, to what exactly do you see this being positive about this location, right? And then also think some of those positives can also be disadvantages uh, to that same location. So uh, to where you might have way too much competition, right? Even the fine dining establishments have competitions with those that are just like Denny's, McDonald's, um, Burger King. Uh, you know, just because you think there's not another fine dining establishment, that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have uh, competition with something that is lesser, okay? That's true, and it's, uh, you, you mentioned something a minute ago, you know, whether you plan on it or not, opening up a restaurant, and. When I got into the industry many, many moons ago, I wasn't planning on opening up restaurants either. And uh, fortunately, I, I took advantage of the education and I learned what was out there. And uh, I, I put those skills to work long before I knew I ever would. Uh, you will find yourself in a restaurant at some point in time. And a lot of this information that we're learning here in CE 155 right now can be used in a reverse perspective, right? So for let's say that you are working in a restaurant and it's not doing very well. Uh, you know what, you can look at all this stuff in reverse and say, hey, are we after the right demographic? Is our target market focused? Are we in the right location? That can help solve a lot of challenges that you face uh, in the restaurant industry. So uh, whether you plan on opening up a restaurant or not, this information will be utilized. Uh, absolutely. Patricia, what's up? Um, okay, the one thing I wanted to talk about, uh, I'm planning on opening a food truck. So the way I was going to gear this, um, or the way I'm going with it, is uh, like the locations where I would plan to, I guess, uh, set up most frequently. I mean, because I plan to do it, you know, out of where I live now, but um, is that okay? To, to, is that the exact what you're looking for as far as my answers to this question would be? <laughs> I, I, if, I, if, I, if I was going to open up a food truck, uh, something that I would do is I, I would uh, definitely get a hold of the Chamber of Commerce. I would start looking for uh, local events that are happening in the area. Uh, and then I would get a hold of Metro, Metropolitan Visitors and Conventions Bureau as well uh, to try to dig out as much information from them as possible. And then I would start following food trucks around to see what their business is like. Um, and then I would also associate myself with some community organizations, sports teams and that type of stuff. Uh, that draw crowds of people that would be applicable to you doing a food truck. So um, there's a lot of different avenues. And I think that's uh, the thing about doing a food truck. It's almost like an octopus. It's not, it's not uh, just one thing that you need to uh, worry about when it comes to target market. It's multitudes of different things that can give you the information to become successful. So Right. And where uh, we were talking about overthinking it earlier, that's kind of where I go. I'll, I'll think, oh, well, if I take this avenue on the question, well, then I could, you know, do this and go here and, and have this, but, but then if I go this way, I won't do any of that. So it's a let, lot. Let me give you a little secret about uh, culinary arts. One of the worst things you can possibly do in this career is think. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, because, uh, 
there, there's an old there's an old saying that that we have uh, us old dogs in the kitchen and and you can't think your way across the cutting board. Uh, it's not going to happen. It's just getting out and doing it and then assessing the information and making a wise decision based on what you've accumulated. Trial and error, right, Chef? Trial and error. You yeah. first try. If you do not succeed, try, try again, right? That would be so. the name of my autobiography, Trial and Error. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, and there's uh, something we do as, as chefs, and I spent most of my career in large hotels, and when, when we're going to go do a, a banquet, for example, for 500 people, uh, we will gather as much information about that group, um, about who they are, what they are, what they eat, everything else, before we even pick up a chef's knife. Uh, because the more information that we arm ourselves with, the more successful that event is going to become, and that's the way we organize ourselves. So, Chef Janet, welcome, and happy Hi. tea day. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank yes. you for drop by. I just wanted to just wish everyone a safe and happy feast day. Uh, it's one of my favorite holidays. I love the food that's at Thanksgiving. And uh, I want to make sure, be safe. I expect to see you all back here next week because you are all blessings in my life. And I want to make sure that you've had an absolutely awesome adventure the next four days. And remember, I'm sure Chef Warren and Chef Eric have said it, uh, you still have assignments due no later than Tuesday, November 27th at 11.59. So have fun, be safe, enjoy the time, and uh, thank you so much for letting me stop by. Thank you, Chef Warren. Thanks, Chef Eric. And thank, thank you, you Chef. Us. Have a good have a one. Thanksgiving, Chef Janet. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. How did, how did everybody, did, did, what, what did uh, everybody think about finding the ideal location? Did anybody, did anybody, zero in on the ideal location? Chef Eric, did you pick up on anybody that zeroed in on an ideal location based on their uh, concepts? I did pick up uh, a couple of them. <clears throat> one was a actual food truck. Uh, the other one was a diner uh, pertaining to their locations, right? Uh, the one that chose a diner uh, zeroed in to really uh, being closer to like a Walmart uh, shopping center uh, district as well as um, I think there was like a car dealership uh, close by and uh, some other stores. Uh, another one uh, also um, pertaining to outside the food truck realm. <clears throat> um, well, first here, sorry. Uh, let's talk about the food truck one where he directed it towards the factor that um, when, with his food truck, he gets to actually think outside the box, right? Uh, you know, with a food truck, your location is always going to be changing, right? You might go ahead and find a cool little brewery that you can kind of post up next to, you know, that doesn't serve food. Uh, you know, I have a good friend here in Colorado. He's got a uh, food truck that he's had now for, I want to say, three or four years. And he parks it out front of the Denver, Colorado Beer Company every single Saturday. Every single Saturday. He doesn't really miss a single Saturday, even if, like, say, Christmas or something falls on that Saturday. If that establishment is open, he parks that truck right out front. Um, and he's kind of worked that deal that way, you know, as to where. But a lot of other things with his uh, food truck as well is that uh, he doesn't go to other uh, locations because of the licensing, right? Those permits and things that you talked about last week, Chef, uh, because those things can be a, a big disadvantage to where certain counties uh, have specific regulations. <clears throat> uh, and then the diner, though, um, the diner, he was talking about um, buying the land, you know, and then getting that, building that stainless steel a diner from the ground up sort of circumstances and then if he really wanted to he could go ahead and lease out some space on his property you know in the future or like cohabitat with a, another uh, business like his friend that he talked to he did some research and looked into a shell gas station uh, that uh, also had a papa john's inside right so you got to think about those types of uh, locations uh, to where you can have that cohabitation because you're then getting specific demographic of people that are always stopping into that specific kind of location right and reduced um, expense yeah but a lot of people actually gave me uh, a few people who actually gave me some uh, map locations specifically and was like yeah it's gonna be across the street from there chef 
right. and I looked at it and gave him my gave him my feedback pertaining to what I thought about the actual location and what might have been a better location within that same uh, vicinity that they were thinking about moving it to. Maybe we ought to start selling properties. We should go online and snag those properties that they're thinking about. And then we can yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be kind of conniving though, chef. <laughs> we'll go into business with you. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. <laughs> I'll sell you the property. You go ahead and build your business, but I get a 10% cut of your revenue every year. Can you imagine them going to buy that piece of property and seeing your name on the realtor sign? I think they'd <laughs> freak. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia's kind of got that kind of look on her face right now, like, hmm. 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 If I see Chef Eric's name on that leasing pamphlet, ladies and gents, let's roll on to a week three. It's a good week here in uh, CU 101. It's exciting. Uh, we are going to talk a lot about everything that you all know already, but we're going to bring it forth so you can all take a look at it in a different light. We're going to be discussing the front of the house, um, uh, which is an extremely important element here in culinary arts. A lot of people are under the assumption that when they go out to eat, and especially those of us that are chefs, uh, like everyone up here on this screen, we're all about the food, right? Uh, and the reality is, it's not all about the food. There's three very, very important parts of the dining experience, like we talked about last week. It's ambiance, service, and food are the three pieces of the pie that come together. And you really can't have one succeed without the other. So that's really our focus this week is the front of the house. Let's take a look at our class page uh, this week. And so we're all doing the same thing. Week three, did everybody see this lovely video up here? Uh, produced by my uh, extensive production department here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, we have our mid-course survey this week, and we would appreciate uh, everybody taking that survey. The, the, this is something that all of you are going to have to learn when you get into industry. You need to solicitate feedback from your customers, good, bad, and indifferent, and utilize that as a tool to help you grow. Uh, I remember when I first started cooking, whenever somebody would say something negative about any of my food, they were tossed. Uh, but then as I matured, I realized, hey, maybe these people have a valid point. If I did what they recommended, I could get better. And here at Escoffier, we don't look for any negative criticism, but we do appreciate your suggestions to help us improve this program. Um, so please um, take the mid-course survey. Uh, very, very important, due by Tuesday. Research materials this week are extremely vital uh, to your success in the program. Don't just breeze through them. Make sure that you read them and you learn them. It'll really help you succeed. Uh, There's some good stuff in there, guys. Definitely uh, look that over. It's going to really, really help you with this week's assignment uh, when it comes down to logically thinking about the layout of your front of your house. Yeah. And, you know, like uh, we were talking earlier at the beginning of the class here, I wasn't planning on, on opening up restaurants and I wasn't planning on making suggestions uh, when I was in culinary school way back when. Uh, but thank God I learned the information because you will utilize it and you will, you can be of assistance to somebody else with it. So uh, definitely thank you very much for all of you that are in attendance this evening at our live session. And for those of you that are attending later, we appreciate it as well. And then our assignment down here at the bottom, we're doing front of the house design and we are also working on our food, on our mood board uh, this week to help display um, what we are talking about. Mood board, is that something that I can go ahead and just be like, I'm angry. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that like hashtag this and like mood board tag that kind of like Twitter and stuff? Or is this like... Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> be careful about what kind of mood you're in when you go to the mood board because it could be uh, something that could get you in a little trouble. Yeah. But uh, moving forward, uh, you have to remember the, the front of the house is what sets the stage uh, for a customer's dining experience, right? Particularly speaking, right when you walk in through the front door to that foyer, uh, you know, who's there to greet you, what the ambiance is like, what the lighting is like, what the small wares are like, what all that stuff is like. Does, is it cohesive to your design? And uh, that's some of the stuff that we're going to get into. 
Tonight's assignment um, involves the front of the house design. And a lot of you are going to be asking how much space is required for the front of the house. And traditionally, we like to have um, about 60% of the restaurant that is dedicated to the dining room and the service and bar areas, right? That would also include uh, public restrooms. And then about 40% of the space gets dedicated to the kitchen, to storage areas, to cleaning areas, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a 60-40 split, front of the house, back of the house. Uh, make sure that you remember that because that will come in critical uh, here a little bit later in this class. And then a lot of people uh, say, well, how big is it, right? How big does it need to be? You have to remember in the restaurant industry, we pay rent on every square inch, right? So if we rent too much, right, then we're gonna be paying too much. And if we don't rent enough, then we're not gonna be making enough money. So your calculations need to be right on the money about your square footage. And in fine dining, fine dining requires a little bit more space. We like to have about 18 to 20 square feet per person in the dining room, right? So if you're going to have um, 100 seats for your fine dining restaurant, you wanna figure about 20 square feet, so it's gonna be about 2,000 square feet would be your dining room. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. And then if you're gonna do like a more casual, quick service type thing, you need a lot less space per person, and so your rents are lower, so your food, uh, your uh, check average is much lower. So you're gonna be doing about 11 to 14 dollars, or 11 to 14 square feet per person. Um, and um, so remember those numbers, fine dining is about 18 to 20, and then casual quick service is gonna be about 11 to 14 square feet uh, per person. Just always remember guys that the more fine and elegant uh, dining experience, the more space and comfortability people want, right? Uh, you know, so kind of think of it more in those kind of terms uh, in relevance to, you know, McDonald's. You see how much they cram pack everybody into that thing. A lot of really uh, utility seating goes all the way across the, the wall. And then they have, you know, small little two top ta tables uh, everywhere. You know, that's because they're trying to cram as much people in there and they don't need as much space per person because how often do you go into a McDonald's and you see, um, you know, that whole dining area full? Never, right? <laughs> you go into a fine dining establishment, you're usually sitting there waiting for your reservation for an open table to uh, come about, right? Because it's all about comfortability. The more comfortable you get, the longer you're probably going to stay. The longer you stay, the more money you're probably going to spend, right? So keep that that's, in mind as well. That's a great segue, Chef Eric, and I'm glad that you brought that up. Because of the fact, we, we're going to talk about some things that affect you in restaurants that you really don't realize, right? Um, and um, as I'm sure we've all been to McDonald's before. We've noticed the color of the seats in there, and the seats are traditionally yellow. And the reason for that is, is yellow is the most uneasy color on the color palette. You do not feel like re uh, relaxing, loitering. Uh, bright yellow is a color that wants you to get up and go, and that's what McDonald's wants. And so they utilize uh, yellow. Other restaurants, you rarely see restaurants that are blue. And uh, the reason for that is, is blue is the most unappetizing color uh, on, on the color palette as well. And there's very few blue foods. I mean, we have purple potatoes that could be kind of blue. We have blueberries that are kind of blue. Uh, but then, you know, that, that kind of runs the gamut. So when you see the color blue, you have certain palette associations. Uh, so we try to stem away from that in the, uh, the restaurant industry. So yellow and blue are traditionally two uh, colors that we don't care for too much. And then what about sound, right? Have you ever walked into a restaurant? You just, everything's nice, but you just feel a little bit uncomfortable. And if you were to have a fine dining restaurant, right, with high back chairs, lovely tableware, uh, the FF and E is absolutely gorgeous in the restaurant, but you don't feel right. And that's because Metallica, Sleep With One Eye Open, is playing in the background, right? There's, you know, there's certain things that uh, send you a, a miss. And then something else that really affects us uh, subconsciously, right? Have, have you ever walked into a dirty bedroom before, right? Is it easy to relax when, when there's trash on the floor, when there's dirty dishes, when there's uh, junk all over the place? Do you feel, is it a relaxing environment, right? So in restaurants, we, we 
really focus not only for operational purposes, but we focus for that nice, easy, uh, when we glance at something, we want to be able to understand it because if, when we glance at something, if we have to figure it out, then it's going to frustrate us. It's going to make us feel uncomfortable, and we don't want that for our customers. It's very, very, very important. All right. And then, uh, you know, getting back, getting back to the noise level, the noise level in a restaurant will oftentimes set the mood. Uh, if you walk into a place and it's got thumping, if the Beastie Boys are playing in the background, that's a group I love, by the way. Beastie Boys rock. Uh, but if they're, if they're, yeah, if they're thumping in the house, uh, you know, that's going to say, hey, get me a cocktail. Uh, you know, I want to get on the floor and start twerking uh, type of music. Whereas, um, you know, and that sets the ambiance, right? Whereas if you walk into a place and they're playing, uh, you, know, uh, you know, some type of uh, slow jazz or a Mozart or a Bach, I'm going to expect Bellini's on my plate with caviar. Right? So these are subconscious things that really, really affect us tremendously. Something else that really affects us in restaurants is lighting. Right? Lighting is huge. Uh, we all know it, but we don't realize it. When you walk into a, uh, a restaurant, the finer dining experience, the darker it is. Right? Because darkness creates sophistication and mystery, and that sets the tone for our dining experience. If you were to walk into a Morton Steakhouse and they were to have fluorescent tube lighting on the ceiling, it wouldn't be right. It would feel awkward, right? Uh, the same thing with going to an Olive Garden or anywhere else. And so lighting is something that we pay, um, we pay very, very close attention to. I wanna take a look at our first slide tonight. Jeff, Yo. can I interject real quick? Uh, Patricia's got a question. What's up, Patricia? Um, basically, I, what I wanted to know is like, when you, in reference to a food truck, what are you addressing as front of the house? But the, the window that you walk up to, the um, menu and all that? Okay, let me ask you a question. Based on everything I just said, right? And based on the type of food that you, you plan on serving, what would, the, what would the exterior of your food truck look like? Well, um, it can be like fine dining, of course, or high back chairs and nice tablecloths, but um, I'm, is that what you mean? Yeah, are you gonna have an exterior area where people can get condiments? Uh, yes, I would think so. So that's part of your front of the house area. Okay. What, about the, what about the appearance of your uh, food truck? I want big, bold graphics, something eye-catching, um, you know, that would stand out. And that's going to set the tone of your customer's experience, right? Okay. Right? And then um, you, you, you have to think about it like this. If, I, if I'm walking up to a truck, right, and I see the, see the light leaning tower of Pisa, and then um, I see vines of tomatoes painted on the truck, and I, I see, uh, you know, Luigi tossing a pizza. When I walk up there, I'm not going to order tacos de carne asada, right? <laughs> because oh, that, I hope not. Right. And what's, what's your concept going to be, Patricia? My truck's going to be a taco truck, but it's going to be different. Um, like I've got a Hawaiian-style taco, um, the Fiesta, which is like the traditional um, Mexican taco, I guess is what it would be called. But, yeah, you're uh, giving a variety of different flavors with your menu, right? Exactly. As to where you're not just sticking with one authenticity, you're sticking right. with several different varieties in order to have a, um, you know, nice variety for the demographic that you're looking for, right? Being able to appease anyone and everyone rather than just one specific set of people. Right, have a basic template of a vessel, a good meat, and then a slaw of some type and then make that different for each kind. That's my dream, per se, but. And then, um, what about this? Where are your customers gonna sit? Well, I thought, was thinking about that, actually. I was thinking about maybe having a couple of fold-out chairs and tables to put out, or, you know, maybe they won't sit. Maybe they'll grab it and go. Maybe they'll sit on the ground, I don't know. What are they gonna drink out of? What are you gonna serve it? Yeah, so, I mean, all that kind of stuff accumulates your front of the house design, right? Okay. Um, so they're, they're, believe it or not, and I, I know uh, when I first thought about food trucks too, it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot that goes on in the food uh, in, in the truck. It seems kind of like it doesn't have every aspect that a restaurant, brick and mortar kind of restaurant would have, but. 
right? But you're the, the, the appearance of your food truck is going to set, set the uh, experience for the customer, right? I mean, right. if they walk up and they see a dirty truck with, you know, mud slung up on the side and everything else, and, you know, they're, they're going to have a certain opinion about how that food is going to be. But if they see this fusion painted truck that's spotless and clean and well lit and everything else, they're going to have another, you know, okay. thought process. So that, that would be my answer. Do, you know, what do you think about that, Chef Eric? Well, see, yeah, so that's what I was actually just looking into here real quick for you uh, to kind of show some examples. So check this out. When you actually look into food trucks, see how this food truck right here is laid out? You see how they got their little sign, but I see all these different shelving mm -hmm. showcasing yeah. that they have a very variety and fresh appeal, you know, very family friendly. Where you got your green color, your red tomato, the different expressions. This is all still part of that front of the house, you know, as to where you want, what are you trying to convey to your demographic? Right, you know, also think pertaining to uh, some other things. So see how this one is, right? They have this nice little green carpet. They went ahead and set up some other little showcasing, little flowers and things like that, trying to show that they're kind of giving a little bit more of a homey feel with that baked goods kind of thing, right? Uh, so it's all a matter of that mood that you really want to set and showcase uh, when it comes down to uh, your style, right? So, uh, you know, this is just very simple, it's very basic, but they have this little condiment table at the back of their truck, right? So, like, when you look at that, you see that they have a nice little spot for all their condiments, but it's right there by their big logo, right? They're trying to direct you in a specific way to a specific area to get you to do things that they want, right? Uh, without you really thinking about the factor of, well, what are they really trying to tell me here? They're trying to get you to really memorize their logo so that way anytime you see it, hear the, the name Cheddar Heads, you're going to want to go, boom, all right, I know that food truck. Where is it at? Cool, I'm going to go there, right? Uh, so really think about, you know, and then, you know, here's another food trailer per se, but they have a nice little table set aside. They have some other uh, chairs kind of laid out. You know, they're, they're trying to show you or, or at least direct you uh, in a way uh, towards what they want you to do, right? And really think about what they're trying to also give you. You know, it's like they got a recycling here, they got a trash can, they have a little barrel that probably has their condiments, they have their signs over here to where they're getting you to walk up here, to come this way, to come out this way, right? That flow of traffic as well, right? So that's that front of the house, you know, whether you're gonna put out uh, little ribbons, uh, you know, per se, like you're a movie theater, form line here, uh, you know, uh, order here, or pick up here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those yep. are all parts of that front of the house concept. Yeah, there, there's a tremendous amount, which leads us to our next slide. Uh, we'll, we'll skip ahead to the food truck slide since we were just talking about them here. And uh, there, there were a couple of ones that we, we have for this week here that are set. And uh, each one of these trucks uh, says something a little bit different um, about uh, the trucks. And I think the ones that Chef Eric just brought up were fantastic. Those were some prime examples. And uh, you know, this one up here in the corner definitely sets a prime example. They have quite a bit of front of the house space in here with the display of their product, their signage, and then uh, the truck, you know, it kind of says, hey, it's something chill and relax, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then New Orleans cuisine down here and then uh, I'm not sure if that's a food truck or not. That might be a veterinarian. I don't know. But, because uh, they've got little fish all over it. And so that's kind of odd. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, each, each to their own. Uh, let's uh, continue talking here for just uh, another minute. We're going to take a look at our slides, right? So we, we all basically have our concept figured out at this point in time, right? What, is it going to be a bakery? Is it going to be a food truck? Is it going to be fine dining, casual dining, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a couple of things that you need to think about uh, for your front of the house uh, that must make sense for Chef Eric to completely understand this week. It's very, very important. Um, are you going to do booths? Are you going to do chairs? And then uh, tables uh, is something that we really are concerned about in the restaurant industry. If I have all large tables in the restaurant industry, that means that I'm going to be stuck with that particular size table, right? And in the restaurant industry, we do not 
project revenue based on our tables. We project revenue based on our seats, right? So if I have a table that only seats six people and I'm so busy that I have to put a two top at that table, that means I lose the revenue on those four other seats, right? So that's something we really, really have to consider. So we like to work with what we call two tops or deuces, right? It's a table that seats two because I can put two two tops together to make a table of four or three two tops together to make a table of six. So it becomes very versatile. The same thing applies with booths, right? Booths are very, very comfortable. Uh, a lot of people prefer them. They can certainly set the ambiance in a restaurant, but at the same time, they're very restrictive as to what you can do with them. So those are co certain considerations that you really need uh, to think about. Something else that really uh, a lot of people don't think about that is a major issue in the restaurant industry, and that is restrooms. Restrooms are huge and oftentimes will set the connotation to the diner's experience, right? And if you take a look at this restroom that's up here in the left-hand corner of the slide, what does that tell you about the restaurant? Yeah? Would, would you wanna eat there? No. That tells me if they can't keep the restaurant or the restroom clean, I can't, ooh, I wouldn't want to see their kitchen. That would be a horrifying aspect, right? And then uh, down here as well. But when I take a look at these other restrooms up over here, my gosh, they're spotless, they're clean, they're well organized. That tells me those people are probably taking pretty good care of their kitchen, their food, and they have good sanitation practices as well. So restrooms are, uh, you know, they're kind of an out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. But when you've been there, you remember them. So uh, that is something that uh, you need to take into consideration. Especially from a guest's perspective. Your guest visits that restroom way more frequently than probably you do because you probably utilize the one that's in the back of the house meant for just employees, right? Uh, if you guys have that. Uh, otherwise, if you're making all your employees also utilize that restroom, um, that's a good way to get them to double check that when they go and look to make sure that it is clean and that it is keeping that sanitation standard for yourself, right? As to where then you then start thinking about that delegation, right? Well, hey guys, I want you guys to, be, you know, this place is your second home, it's your job. Uh, if you need to use the bathroom and you see something out of place in there, go ahead and pick it up, take two minutes, do it. Everything in your restaurant is a direct reflection upon your quality, that includes yourself, your restrooms, your dining room, uh, everything else. And so uh, that is all extremely critical. Uh, regarding tonight's assignment, there's a couple of key areas uh, that we need to focus on uh, and that Chef Eric is going to be looking at during the grading process. Um, first thing that we deal with in restaurants uh, traditionally is foyers, right? And we're gonna focus mainly right down the middle on casual concepts. Foyers are the customer's initial introduction to the restaurant. Um, there you will traditionally find a waiting area um, or a hostess stand. So foyer is something that you want to take into consideration when you have people coming into your restaurant. The second area that uh, you want to have consideration for in this week's assignment is the bar area. Uh, the bar service area, is it conveniently located to the kitchen, right? Can they serve food from the bar? Does it make sense? Can people that are waiting for a table uh, can they easily access the bar from the foyer? Uh, these are things that need to be addressed during this week's assignment. Another critical area that is in a restaurant is the dining room. Uh, the dining room must have clear and easy access to the kitchen, obviously, must have access to the bar for serving alcohol, and then also must have clean and easy access to the restrooms. And then for this week's assignment, do not forget uh, to provide service areas because waiters and waitresses and busers and bus people need uh, service areas to work out of, right? You have to think about footsteps, uh, which are critical in the restaurant industry. We do not keep our plates and our glassware and everything else in the kitchen, right? When somebody gets up and leaves, we need to have that stuff conveniently located so the bus people can have easy access to it so they can quickly reset that table to get the next group in. So. Uh, be very, very conscientious of that. Um, it's extremely uh, critical about where you put things. Um, let's take a look at our front of the house this week. 
Uh, so we can talk about some important areas on the file. So up here, this is the foyer area that I was talking about. This would be where you find a restaurant. When you first walk in, uh, service is something that really, really irks me, right? There's nothing like walking into a restaurant and not being greeted right away and having to stand there while the hostess is on their cell phone or uh, texting or on MySpace or whatever, whatever they use these days. Uh, it's extremely important that you provide a clear and concise area to greet the customers. Uh, down here, this is a great uh, traditional display for a bakery counter service type restaurant where you would walk up, you'd order your food, uh, then they would either bring it to your table or you could wait for it. So that's a prime example. And if you notice up here, it says every inch counts. And if you take a look at what this restaurant did right here, it's extremely intelligent the way they have utilized every single square inch in this restaurant. Um, number one, that wood sets a certain tone uh, to the, the flavors of the food because you're thinking smoked, grilled right off the bat. Uh, everything is nice and neatly stored, convenient access for the service staff. So as soon as you get up and leave, they can turn around and reset that table right away quickly and efficiently. And then down here is a great bar area. Um, nice laid out, uh, wide open. So it tells me the larger the space, the, the more fine dining this is going to be. So it's very, very important. And then back here is a traditional yeah. service area. Um, where the servers would come back to refill beverages, uh, to get additional stock items, to get sugar caddies, uh, that type of stuff. Traditionally, we will have a POS system in here uh, where servers will ring up your orders. So that's very, very important as well. And then down here, this is what we call um, a mini bar. Uh, very, very popular in the hotel industry. Uh, and these are also mobile service stations. So you can place them wherever you want to within your restaurant. Uh, depending on the flow and the size of your groups that are coming in, you may want to have a service station right next to that, that 30 top, for example, that you can easily, uh, easily service and provide goods for. So I want to take a look at this week's assignment uh, so we can all be on the same page and make sure we all understand it. We've covered uh, the basic areas in a restaurant. Some of the things that you're going to really need to focus on this week for Chef Eric in order to satisfy him are sanitation issues, right? You must provide hand sinks in your dining room for your service staff uh, to wash their hands. Uh, you must provide restrooms. You must provide um, access to and from the kitchen. Uh, very, very important. Traditionally, restaurants will have two doors, one that goes in, one that goes out, right? They're not, you know, we don't use them both for both, right? Uh, and then you'll also need to be very, very conscientious of the traffic flow in your dining room. For example, you are not going to put your hostess stand in front of the restroom. So as you're seating people into the dining room, that stench and people are coming out of the restrooms uh, does not set the right ambiance. So there's a lot of logic uh, that goes into the layout. Um, let me get to our front of the house slide here this week. This week, we are going to be working with the, um, with the template that we opened up in week one. Do we all remember that? Yeah, that template is what we are going to be utilizing this week. And I have it right here. Okay, so you are going to be creating your front of the house. And this is just a typical front of the house. I know some of you are working on food trucks and on the next slide, you will see a food truck. Um, but we would prefer that you work on the front of the house diagram for this week. Um, so we, we know that you have a, a clear comprehension of what, what a dining room is supposed to look like. Uh, the next slide uh, here is for the interior design, the kitchen area of your food truck, not your front of the house. So. Uh, the first question, can I move the walls? Yes, you can. You're going to click on the line, right? Just left click, and then you're going to scroll the line over a little bit or scroll the line, whichever way you want to. And then if you want to rotate that line, you just click on the blue bubble at the top of the line, and then you can turn it any which way you want to create the shape of the dining room that you are interested in. Does that make sense to everybody? 
And then if you're super uncoordinated like I am, you can easily reassemble it. Yeah, I did it. Okay. And then these doors up here are, are objects. And if you left click on the door, right? So say if I want this to be my entrance and I left click on it, it becomes illuminated or highlighted. And I can simply drag that uh, to anywhere I want. And with this blue bubble, I can rotate it whichever direction I choose. So now I have, I've just created what I think would be a good uh, entrance to the restaurant. Uh, that can be anywhere that you choose for it to be. This is your dining room, not ours. On the gray bar that's down here on the bottom, you can scroll over to the right-hand side of the page and you can see the front of the house things that you will be working with. And you think, oh, there's a limited supply. There's not, right? So you're gonna take your table, right there, left click on it, and then drag it to wherever you choose to put it. If you want to have multiple, uh, what are these, uh, 10 tops? If you wanna have multiple 10 tops, you will right click, copy, and then uh, left click, paste, and now you have another one. Does that make sense to everybody? So you're just gonna copy and paste the image to create as many uh, of those particular tables that you like. And then uh, up here we have two tops and then we have round tables, uh, six tops, four tops, um, et cetera, et cetera. The, the layout of this dining room is your decision. What we're primarily concerned, in, uh, concerned about is the operational effectiveness of this. Like I mentioned earlier, if this is your restroom door up here on the left-hand side, do not put the entrance to the restaurant next to the restroom door. It's bad, right? And then um, over here, you will find, uh, down here, you'll find display cases. If you have a bar in your restaurant, you will be required to have triple sinks. Okay, Chef Eric will make sure that you have triple sinks in there because that's where we wash bar glasses, right? So I'm gonna drag my triple sink over here to the bar. If I wanna rotate it, I will click and I will rotate. And then I can just drag it up against the wall there and boom, I'm set. If I wanna create a service area, um, if I wanna create some smaller walls in my restaurant, I can just left click on the big wall I can copy it, right? Then I can right click, hit paste. Now I have another wall and I can make it smaller. And then I can drag it up any way that I choose. If I wanna have like a service station up over here for my waiters and bus people, I can do that. So they have uh, a nice clean area that's organized for them to work in. You're also going to need to think about the POS system. POS system stands for point of sale. Traditionally in the restaurant industry, we, we take an order, we write it down on a pad, and then we go over to the POS system and we punch it in. That ticket will then go to the kitchen and the cooks then begin to prepare the food. <clears throat> and it also creates an inventory system for us and uh, uh, also does a lot of other managerial things. But you'll need to have one of those in the dining room somewhere. So, I've just created this little service area right here, uh, back in here. My servers can go in there and work. I can put um, a table back in there. I can put a drink dispenser in there so they can go back in there and get drinks. I can put refrigeration. Low boy is a type of refrigerator. That's right here. So they can keep uh, their half and half uh, other dairy products in there and that type of thing. And then lightings. You must have trash cans in your dining room, okay? Chef Eric will be zeroing in on that because if you expect your bus people to carry the trash to the kitchen each time, it ain't gonna happen, right? They will create their own little trash areas if you don't give them trash cans. Trash cans belong in the service areas. Okay. So, did I, you think I covered that pretty well, Chef Eric? Yeah, I just wanted to quickly touch base to let everybody know, um, you know, you can use hotkeys, okay? So like control C uh, to do a like a quick copy, uh, control V to do a quick paste, right? So that way uh, you're not always opening up that other chain of command with that right click. Uh, you can hold the control and then 
touch C is going to make that copy for you. Okay, so it might save you a little bit of time in the long run, uh, rather than uh, making your hand really sore utilizing that mouse control and uh, right clicking pulling down. Uh, it's just something that I found utilizing um, and coming from a graphic design uh, background that those hot keys and those quick commands are really going to help you and save your day in the long run. Um, I wanted to share with you guys uh, a quick finished project of the one that I did um, back when I was a student, if you don't mind, Chef. Go for it. So here we go. So this is uh, my design layout of my front of the house and back of the house combo um, to where that's what we were, uh, your guys' format is more so for just the uh, front of the house as to where this is uh, kind of like the, the double whammy um, to where they've refined that um, template that you guys are using for this week. So that way it separates the front of the house and back house a little bit more so for you guys. Um, but see how this here is gonna be my entryway. Okay, so um, this is a spot that will come in and then they have that option, right? Is to go to the bar area or the dining area, right? And then a nice little waiting area. I have my trash cans, low boys and POS systems all lined up right here. So that way even the bar people can step out, got a POS right there. Bar people can step out, use the POS here. Lounge server can come and use that POS system right there, right? I got a POS system over here along with, uh, there should be a trash can there. I don't know where that disappeared to. Um, but notice how everything is really just, and then all these gray squares are more booths um, from back in the day. Mind you, this template's about three years old, so that's why it's just kind of a variation of the one that you guys will be utilizing um, to where you're gonna wanna really think about the way that you design things, right? So this is gonna be a uh, entry or exit, uh, I think this was actually the entry uh, to the actual kitchen as to where there's an entry to the kitchen over here. Um, so uh, just really think about to where you can kind of get that flow going. So that way it's a quick come down, come in, come around, be able to touch whatever, swoop back around, come back in, come back down and around. And then the bathrooms are actually supposed to be over here. Uh, this little template has uh, aged uh, in three years, uh, kind of like my young self. Um, definitely uh, not so young anymore, but <clears throat> it's just kind of thinking about that layout, right? And kind of the, the design aspect of what you want to be doing uh, and that flow of your establishment. So that way these servers can go ahead and pop in, come down in here, get that food, go down in here if they need to get that food, go into that dining area, right? So uh, just a little example for you guys to where, how you want to really think about those design layouts and how uh, that flow works for you, okay? Absolutely, that's a great example. Great example. One thing I forgot to point out, down here at the bottom right-hand corner of the page is your hand sink. Um, so you need to make sure that you have plenty of those available in the dining room. And then uh, once again, the trash cans are in there as well. Where are the trash cans? Oh, I moved it. I moved one already. So you'll have to make multiple copies of the trash can. You can do uh, what Chef Eric recommended with the uh, Control C or the Control V to paste, or you can right click or left click, whatever is most convenient for you. Other part of our assignment this week is the mood board uh, that needs to be taken care of. We are expecting you to cut and paste multiple images of different restaurants into this area right here. Not just one image, but multiple images to give Chef Eric a good perspective of exactly what you're trying to do. Uh, this will help you give ideas of the colors, the type of FF&E, &E. FF&E &E in the restaurant industry stands for furniture, fixture, and equipment. So he can have a good understanding of exactly what you're working on. Share and, another uh, quickie there. Go. You can keep talking, Jeff. I just want to show a demonstration for that one for you. Okay. And then uh, you're going to need to uh, uh, fill out the uh, seating area, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So that's a nice mood. Uh, that's a nice mood board right there. Got some bright greens. A lot of those structures you were seeing uh, in my uh, previous slide were all these, to where they're still showing depth, right? You can see through them, so they're not technically walls. They're still showing a little bit of ambiance 
showcasing how the bar area can be set up, how the walls will really kind of look, how the ceiling will kind of look, and really kind of think about the type of furniture you, you want uh, within your establishment as well, right? Now, that's so, something, something that we, we, we need to catch here before we go too much further. If the, the, the written concept of your restaurant says that it's a country style breakfast house, right? Specializing in biscuits and gravy. And then you put up a mood board, just like Chef Eric had up there on the board. It's not gonna jive, right? So what you're trying to serve and where you're trying to serve it need to be copacetic with one another. They're, they have to work. Uh, so be very, very- Excellent cautious. point, Chef, excellent point. Yeah, because you know, it's like you walk into a dentist, Denny's, you get the feel that it's a diner. You get diner food. Right. Um, my concept is more of a nose to tail cookery with the fine dining and elegant kind of service mm -hmm. to where people are going to be all dressed the same, identical, right? To where you grab one person and you think he's your server, he's actually another server. Why? Because I want everybody to help everybody, right? That's my uh, concept is to where that's how I want people to act uh, as my employees. I want them to be um, very multi. Um, what is that chef like not multitask multi -task. or yeah. multi cross trained yeah to where they can do more than one job one more than one position you know it's like you're gonna come in that day uh, or you're gonna get your you know your um schedule for your week and it's gonna say server busser server server busser you know you're gonna be able to do anything and everything it's gonna be front of the house everybody works together back of the house everybody works together period okay I like it. I like it. I love that attitude. Yeah. So uh, kind of wrapping up the class here. We, we want to keep it a, a little bit on the shorter side tonight. Uh, we let's take a quick look at our assignment uh, that we have over here. Uh, in your copy of your CE 155 facility layout tool, fill in the mood board on slide six. Uh, very, very important. After doing that, keep the design choices in mind. Uh, labeled week two, uh, labeled slide, labeled uh, on slide two, labeled week three, right? When submitting this assignment, in addition to the link, please include a one to two sentence summary of your uh, food business concept in online text. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions about that? So your design, Chef Eric, is going to be checking you for flow, sanitation, and visual appeal. Smart? Questions? Remember, sanitation, hand sinks, trash cans. Okay, right. huge flow. And are, are people going to be crisscrossing? They're going to be going in the same and out the door. You know, they're going to be button heads together. They're going to be like, ah, freaking out. Don't put the 20 top in front of the kitchen because they're going to be getting up and, you know, getting out and all that other kind of good stuff. So you need to be very conscientious of that type of stuff. No front doors, bathrooms yep. next door to each other. Nope. nope. No kitchen, nope. bathrooms next door to each other. That's okay. It. So does anybody have any questions? So ladies and gents, thank you very much for a great week three live session. Uh, as usual, if anybody has any questions or they do not understand what was said, please feel free to reach out. 520-276-6281 is my number. Chef Eric's number is on the class page. We both love to field questions and answer questions. So uh, we are here. We're also available by text, email, or on the Moodle message board. So uh, please feel free to get a hold of us. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, everybody, and have a great day. Okay. One last quickie. Uh, remember that any of your guys' assignments, okay, that get submit, um, you might not receive a feedback until Sunday, okay? Uh, so everything for this week uh, and this upcoming week, um, we are closing up shop Thursday and Friday. Uh, so if you still submit or anything like that, or if I haven't gotten to your feedback, you will receive feedback uh, no later than Sunday, 5 p.m., okay? Keep that in mind. Happy Thank Thanksgiving, you. everybody. Talk to you. <laughs> Bye.